Welcome to GameSpot Presents Now Playing. Today, it's, I think this might be our very first 3DS Now Playing. And it what is. better way to start it off than by doing a Now Playing for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, a game that comes out in, in a few short days here on the 19th. Sunday, yes. You've yes. been playing this game. So much playing this game. So much Ocarina of really Time. Really enjoying it. Blast from the past, uh, revamped all fancy graphics, 3Ds, new features and whatnot. We're going to show you some of those today. Uh, here I am. We're starting off early. We're going to try to keep it free of spoilers for those of you who haven't played it. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we are. I'm starting off. And you'll see in the background, we got this sort of sweet dual display, courtesy of Nintendo. That's not, it's not actually going to display in some strange way. We're just, <laughs> you know, giving it to you this way because their fancy capture device makes it look good like that. And so here we are in Kokiri Village, uh, forest, sorry, and young Link descends for his uh, day's constitutional, I suppose, <laughs> is a thing to say. Here's my friend, Saria. What? It's true. So I've already played a little bit here in the beginning of the game, for those of you who are familiar. Uh, the strange things have been happening with the forest. I gotta find a weapon, and I need to buy a shield. Well, I already got my weapon. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. You got your sword. And now, as you can see, like, there's just a lot more greenery going on here. It, for those of you who may remember the Nintendo 64 version, or have played it on Wii War, or its various other incarnations. Mm -hmm. Let's take a quick look around Kokiri Village here. There's Mido's house. I robbed him earlier, so I have enough rupees to <laughs> buy it's not, shield. You, you don't rob people in Hyrule. You borrow. You borrow. For an yeah. indefinite amount of time. And there's my friend Navi uh, suggesting that I go see the great Deku Tree. Thank you. That's very, that's very helpful. So we're getting a good look here of the updated textures, the updated character models, and what I believe is sort of an updated lighting system, too, that's sort of yellowy haze up there. It just looks really, really vibrant. Uh, and here I'm going to go into the shop and buy a shield so I can go get on with the action. But, you know, once once I start jumping around, you'll keep an eye out for the animations um, because those have gotten a little bit of a boost too. But, you know, this is an adventure. And for those of you not familiar with it, you start off with, you know, it's like any Zelda game. You start off with not a lot. On your, going for you. So you kind of got to get your arsenal together. I, I went through a little maze and found the Kokiri sword. And now, using the lower screen, I'm just going to tap my gear subscreen to... A humble tunic. Yes. I'm going to equip my child-sized wooden shield. And as you can see, all these spots are going to be filling up with stuff later on. We got items. I, there's just so much stuff that you eventually get. But right now, we're keeping it light. We're going to go see the great Deku Tree. And we first have to go through... This this jerk, Mido. Mido. That's right. I have a shield and a sword, Mido. Step off. Good grief. Good, good grief is right. A wimp is still a wimp. You know, some people just are bitter. Mido among them. Mido, see you later. So long, buddy. So here we go. Adventuring into Find the Day for a Deku Tree. Oh, a no. journey not without peril. Fortunately, Trim this and pick up a Deku stick. Sweet stick, bro. And it, it does this, you know, equip thing. I'm gonna equip that real quick. Oh, nope. We're gonna see a little scene with Deku tree. Oh yeah. And so you know, you notice that his tech, the textures are are. He looks like you know he's got tree bark on him, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. You notice that I, I chose Link as my name. Uh, in That's this a good version, you know, but <laughs> in you... this version, as opposed to uh, the other one you've been playing. Yeah, I've been playing as Big Hank. Big Hank. Verily, thou hast felt it. Possibly my favorite line in <laughs> Ocarina of Time. Uh, yes, let's go with yes. So this is the first dungeon in the game, and we're gonna go right into the Deku Tree's gaping maw, and we're gonna play and find uh, one of the first, you know, combat items you get, and show you some of the new functionality that's enabled by the 3DS and its uh, techno wizardry, I techno, believe. I think that is the official term, techno wizardry. Mm -hmm. Of also, course. Also known as motion control. Yes, motion, motion input, gyroscopes, gyroscopes, accelerometers. Of course, we're not showing you the 3D because that doesn't show well on your 2D display, but it looks good. The 3D adds like a, a really nice sense of depth. I've been playing 3D most of the time. Mm -hmm. 
and um, have found not really a what. There, so there's actually something interesting about, like, when it does the big cinematic camera sweeps and pans, uh -huh. it does something that I've never really noticed in other uh, DS games or 3DS games. It actually dims the bottom screen to sort of, like, highlight the top screen. Have you noticed that? No. It, so, yeah, it's actually dimming the bottom screen. That's interesting. Yeah. These vines are a lot more cool looking. That's cool. The, the, yeah, it's, and I mean, like I said, it's the, the colors are just, like, have this really nice saturation to them. All right, so these these little jerks are on the wall. Of course, if you target, Navi gives you a little little handy hint. I don't. I'm not going to venture up this wall, but I will see what's in the box. Oh yeah, there we go. Totally dimmed. Yeah. Good observation, Sean. I have a keen eye. Totally got a map. And so you can see the map appears right there on the bottom screen. Shows which uh, which area I'm in. Why, thank you. <laughs> Navi, of course, ever helpful. Boom, back in your face. Sure, give me a tip. This is the first dungeon, so it is chock full of helpful tips like <laughs> that one from that little Deku fellow. And uh, I want to get that big uh, box up there. So, Ooh, go get it. Boom, let's do this. Oh, what's it going to be? This is that treasure chest noise that uh, some of you may remember from the, obviously from most Zelda games. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. But was also played uh, during Nintendo's press conference by a full orchestra. Oh, you're right, yeah. All right, so here we go. We got the slingshot. I'm going to equip this bad boy. Boom, that's as easy as poking the screen. I don't even bother to take out the stylus most of the time. I just poke it. Just poke it's, it. <laughs> it works really well. So now All right, I am... So now you're actually using one of the new control options here, which is just moving the system around. Yeah, so it switches to first person view for a slingshot. You know, unless you're, unless you're locking on and targeting, mm -hmm. then you can shoot. Right. But then, you know, if you want to shoot like uh, things on the wall, like skeletulas and whatnot, yeah. you just kind of aim where that little thing is and there you go and it's really easy it responds real oh, gosh. oh i wanted to go up there it responds really well uh really it, it, it's basically what what i got out of it is that it's more designed for like small incremental movements than like the big like full 180 degree turns yeah because you're gonna you know you're gonna be oh that was not really that worth it uh you're gonna be you know it's gonna snap right in front of you the way you're facing uh-huh so yeah i can spin it around but it sort of, you know, depends on my freedom of movement. Yeah. And also, if you're playing in 3D, uh, it can get a little bit tricky because if you're not, you know, as you know, if you don't keep that fixed viewpoint, then the 3D sort of falls out, out of sync. Um, but it's it's really simple, and it actually, you know, what you you kind of might think is a little cumbersome, is actually really kind of fun. So I'm just. Boom. Nice. Nixing those guys. Nice work. Now, obviously, a normal 3DS you have at home would not have two cables sticking out of it. Right? right, so I'd have a lot more freedom of motion. A lot more freedom of motion. And that also applies, once I get up here, I'll show you. It applies to um, the, the like, first-person view. So you can hold down the left button to sort of look around you. And here we get a look at a Skeltula looking nasty. Just a lot gnarlier than its predecessor was. And that's true for a lot of the villains. They just look meaner and grosser. Like I'm in a pretty grim area in my single, my other playthrough, and some of the enemies are like downright creepy. Yeah. And it's really satisfying because it just makes it all the more fun to vanquish them. I'm open this big up chest. The music is so dramatic. And that's one of the things that, you know, that it sounds really great coming out of the, the 3DS speakers. It also sounds really good if you, like, I play with headphones on this because it's not my, not my cleanest combat effort. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and then, of course, you can play with fire a little bit. Let me get my oh-so-flammable Deku stick out. Might as well equip everything I have while I'm at it. Why not? Here we go. This is one of the, you know, playing with fire is one of the puzzle sort of elements that you see a lot in Ocarina. And 
I'm gonna go get this little treasure chest over here. Nope, you know what? Not worth it. I'm gonna keep going. You know, normally, I try to get every chest in the dungeon. It's, it's a good idea, but come on, go, through, go out the door. So Sean, did you play Ocarina of Time? I mean, you have you have experience with this. Game. I have experience with Ocarina of Time back in the 1990s. I played the Nintendo 64 version. Mm -hmm. I am proud to admit I had the gold cartridge. Did really? You? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think so. I'm sorry to rub it in hey, like that. You know that was was hurtful. <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's amazing that a game I haven't played since the 1990s can still have such a nostalgic effect. And now I'm going to show you what happens when you leap off a huge cliff. Oh no! Yes, you can nice. totally progress in the dungeon. And now, I won't play this too much further because I want to hop out to another area to show you folks. But this is what we call a golden skulltula. And you shoot these guys, you get these little... These things. Tokens. And you have to kind of work your jump to get this one. But, uh... You collect a bunch of these throughout the whole adventure. There's a hundred of them. And you can get stuff like, you know, bigger wallet, a little item that helps you find secrets. Mm -hmm. Very handy. Just listen for the telltale scratching. Oh, okay. And, uh, you can get off that. All right. Uh, Deku Nut. Throwing the Deku Nut freezes the Deku S Baba, I believe is the name of that one. And now it's time for more fun with fire. But that takes a little while longer. We don't have a whole lot of time here on this now playing, folks. So I am going to jump out to another part. Yeah, we're going to take time travel. Would you say? Uh, sure. All right. Yes, well, I've got, I am a, I've time got travel. a song to accompany about my time traveling. Time, if you, if you'd like, pray tell. You're do probably play wondering it. why I've got this ocarina in my hand. Well, it's to play sweet, sweet music. Lay it on us, buddy. All right. Okay. Now for a sweet solo. You like that? That was pretty soulful. That was a soulful very playing of the ocarina. Uh, also, that is just like a super annoying sound. <laughs> he was practicing that for about 20 minutes before we started this, folks. Come and I'm on. really surprised. Why are you ruining it did not the come magic? I just. Wow. All right. Fine. I want to show you guys another f another <laughs> new feature of the 3DS version, and that's this little wibble wobble stone over here. Uh, I believe it is called a shake a stone. You can take a little peek in this thing when it's glowing, and it has new hints for you on oh, how okay. to progress. Cool. Uh, which is really nice. I mean, so you've got you know high rule bonus inside the Deku tree. So we were just in there. Let's see. Uh, you know, let's see how I would have. Cleared the cobwebs, which right. was the thing I was just about to do. Okay. So it just shows you a couple video clips of what to do. Oh, okay. And there you go. And then, you know, I can see. Wait, now are these for areas that you have already been to or? Yes. How does this work? So, I mean, so I get into Hyrule, right? Okay. And there's, you know, there's only five. It's five of 25. There's only five mm -hmm. tips here. But as I progress in the game, It'll show me more tips. Oh, okay, I see. This is show me how to get through Kakariko Village up mm -hmm. to the mountain trail, talk to that guard, and then, you know, do what? So the, you can find these in a couple places. There's one here, there's one in the Temple of Time. Yeah. And they're really, they're a handy thing because if you remember, like, it's not... Navi makes it pretty clear, like, what you should generally do next, but... Listen! Yeah. Hey! And they, hey, listen! Listen! And there is, there is um, definitely like some leaving it up to you to decide. Like, you know, you have to take your adventurer's intuition, use the clues available to you to figure out where to go. And in this case, you know, one of the clues, if you look in the bottom right, when we get out to Hyrule Field here, it's uh, this sort of pulsing dot right there. It's, let's see, map. make that a little bigger. The pulsing dot is Death Mountain, which is where we go next, because in this save i have beaten the deku tree gotten the spiritual stone talked to princess zelda and gotten a little ocarina sean shall we have, have a little duet oh, yeah i'll lay down a mean solo here we right go. here oh, oh yeah like that okay that's <laughs> over we 
should Thanks start a band. With us. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> <An> <laughs> a two-man ocarina band. <laughs> and so if you look at the sky here, you can kind of see this, these like deep, these like violets into deep purples into blues. Like the colors are just a lot more, it's a lot more of a vivid color spectrum uh, in this version than in previous versions, which just it is. makes it sort of come alive and, and helps, you know, this is, this game is over, originally over 10 years old. Right. And so it really helps it stay fresh, even though, you know, you're not going to look at it and mistake it for something that was made, yeah. you know, like you can still see the old, old polygons and some of the old elements, but the H, the, the graphical update, here I'll fight some of these guys. Just have fun. If you want to summon Epona, I've got a song for that. You know, I don't, I can't actually summon her yet because I haven't <laughs> met her, but what song would I play if, you, you if play I were one. to do that, Sean? That was, that was better. Yeah. I'd say that was better yeah. than your song of time. I would say I that was fantastic. I mean, you're not a modest fellow. No, so not we'll by any say stretch. that about you. I'd probably say that was the best ocarina rendition of all time. <laughs> of, and so for those of you who don't, aren't super familiar with the ocarina here, <laughs> it's, it's this thing you play. You get a couple songs mm -hmm. which are handily listed here. We've got a couple here, Soraya, Epona. These songs all accomplish different things, and some of the, they eventually end up serving as like a, a locomotion right. thing. They also help you unlock secrets and what have you. And so that's, it's a really neat musical element of the game. Um, I'm gonna go up into, this is Kakariko Village, and one of the things you might notice here is the houses have like a lot more, they have, they have posters on the side. Of mm -hmm. course, they're in the normal Hyrule gibberish that you can't read, but, um, the, uh, the exteriors of buildings and the interiors of buildings are another thing that's gotten a real graphical upgrade. And especially this one, which is the Sheikah's house. There are a lot, there seem to be a lot more objects inside them. Yeah, right? definitely. And if you look around here, uh, hello, sir, would you like to speak to me? Wow. No, I didn't have any parents, okay? Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That guy's full of fun facts. <laughs> but if you look on the wall here, like you see pictures of that hammer smashing uh, bricks and switches. And these are like all pictorial handy things that, you know, are tips for dungeons later on. And here's even a whole map of Hyrule. Oh, yeah. You know, that you can see on the board there. So, and there's that, you know, arrow through the fire thing. It's just like a lot richer landscape inside these buildings. Which is really cool for someone who's played this game, you know, m many times and just a nice little incentive to revisit it. And now what I think I'm going to do is head up and we'll meet a Goron, because why not? And so this is one of the thing about one of the things about these adventures. As you see, I'm walking by all these houses, but not you know like over the course of you know this takes tens of hours to play through. Here's a little. This dude is hiding out because he's supposed to be building stuff. But you know that empty shop becomes a place you can buy stuff later on right. because of events in the game. And you know we're one of the most obvious events in the game is you don't always play as little kid Link. You True. play as adult Link. He grows, you know, three sizes and wields a bigger sword and a whole bunch more items and travels a land that is significantly different than the one we are currently traveling through. And that time travel, yes, the Song of Time is not just something that Sean gave you a wonderful rendition of earlier. <laughs> and it is that, a wonderful oh, rendition. Oh, God, you die. Sorry, I get... I get angry at you those get, things. You get into it. You know, that's fine. It's just a little bit feisty. You put a lot of yourself into your craft. Mm hmm That one gets to live. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let him yeah. let him live. He he was the baby after you killed his parents. I'm gonna let him live so he can grow up and uh, become my my worst enemy. <laughs> now here's a fun little tip for you guys that I just actually picked up recently. If you see Navi go somewhere and she turns green and you can't like target her and interact with it there's a couple things it could be let's see which one which song do i want to play here one of them is you can play the sun song y r a y r a yep that's what it sounds like
You can play the sun song when she turns green, and lo and behold, oh. a super helpful fairy will come out. Oh, and this hey. fairy will wrap around me and replenish all my health bits, and oh gosh, Oof. Rogue Goron. It can also be, uh, you know, you can also play the Song of Time in instances okay. like that and summon a time block, or the Scarecrow song once you, you know, can time travel and a Scarecrow buddy will come, come along and help you out. Nice. One of the neat things about playing through this game, okay, what's up, Goron? They eat rocks. Of course, uh, because, because they're delicious. You know, that's, that's a thing they do. And uh, I'm gonna go down here and have a, have a word with Papa Goron. This is another instance. So Navi here is turned green, but it allows me to check this soft carpet for guests. It feels so plush underneath my feet. And then you talk to this guy, and you know, I want to. I want to get the spiritual stone, etc. Stop it. So, big brother, they highlight you know the stuff that's a hint, so that helps. The right. royal family's messenger. At this point, I've already proven. I already know how to prove that I'm the royal family's messenger. Right. And that's with sweet ocarina jams. Hot and this is this is an effect that actually is pretty nice in 3D. That these like sort of down the tube songs. Oh things. yeah. You can, you know, sort of imagine that that one would pop out a little bit. I w yeah, I would, I would assume. I'm going to go have a little chat with Big D. <laughs> That's what I call Darunia. We're Big D? Yeah. I call him Radbeard. Radbeard? Yeah. That's, that's fair. He's, he's a little miffed. He's a little angry. Get out of my face. <laughs> I, will, I will give you some, some information. This is a Goron problem. We don't need any help from strangers, which of course means I got 99 it's time Goron for help from problems, <laughs> but Link ain't one. It's time for help from strangers. <laughs> Link ain't one. Okay, I like that. So then you can, uh, they ask you to like, all right, I want my, if you use a Deku stick for too long, it catches on fire. Well, it is on fire, but it burns up and then you can't uh, use it anymore. But I have 18 of them, so I don't think that would be a yeah, problem. You'll Come be on, okay. go there. You have a lot of sticks. There's a pro tip, folks. Uh, if you see something, light it on fire. Or, you know, bomb it or what have you. And so now that that thing's boogieing along, I can maybe go try to light some other fires. And uh, there you go. So, McInnes, any, yes. any other questions or anything before we wrap? Bring this little teaser of the... Uh, oh, my thing ran out. Oh, well. If, if you haven't played the, the game before, if you haven't played a Zelda game before, mm -hmm. what, like you're one of seven people in the world who haven't, haven't right. played a Zelda game before. And you want to get, get out of this? that club. Yeah. It, it's, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they make it super easy to get into with those hint stones. And just with the whole, those are a new addition, but it, the, whole, the whole game is structured to just make really easy to get into. And, you know, because it's over 10 years old, there's always walkthroughs online. That is true. Uh, if you get super stuck. But part of the fun of this game is that even though there are a lot of clues to help you get going, it's not holding your hand the whole way. And so there is that, that fun of exploration, there is that thrill of discovery that's in there. And so you wanna find out like the final verdict on this, GameSpot's review will be up on Friday this week, that's two days from now. Ooh, wow. Complete with video review for your viewing pleasure. All right, Yeah. excellent, sounds good. And uh, if you guys wanna follow uh, the rest of the news in the Nintendo world, you can check out all our Wii U coverage from E3, just go to e3.gamespot.com. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'm Sean McInnes. And I'm Chris Waters. So long, everyone. See ya. Ocarina.